Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm an On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm building an HDR photo, which I haven't done in a while. And while my traditional HDRs have been in Aurora HDR for a long time and will continue to be, I just don't do them as often. But on my recent trip to the uh, New England area, I did take a couple of brackets a couple of times and I've got a landscape that I'm kind of working on. And I just thought, you know what, while I'm in on one and kind of playing around, it'd be fun to make an HDR, see how it goes. So that's what we're doing. Here are the three exposures. You can see dark, medium, and bright. And of course, you can see my finished HDR over here as well because I have done this already. But anyway, I've got these three. I'm gonna right click and click on Create HDR. I'm gonna give that a moment as it merges images, as you can see, creates preview, and then it opens my combined image here. Now, one of the things I do like about this is because it's built into On One Photo Raw, you get a basically a develop pane here where you can go in and apply camera profiles as well as all these basic edits. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with contrast. Go ahead and pull that up a little bit. I'm gonna pull the highlights down, negative uh, 100. So basically the default HDR look that it gave, I wasn't really satisfied with, so I wanted to go in and make some further refinements. I'm gonna bump up the uh, midtones a little bit. I'm gonna leave shadows where they are. I'm gonna take whites slightly higher and I'm gonna leave blacks where they are as well. I'm actually gonna drag this one a little bit to the right with the temperature because I wanna make it warmer and I'm fine with the tint where it is. Saturation is the same and vibrance is gonna get a little bit of a boost. So that's the basic HDR look that I have. Now the other nice thing is of course they have an HDR look filter as you probably know. You can click on that and come over here and add some additional compression detail and things like that which is actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bump the compression up to about 120 and change, something like that. It gives a little bit more of that HDR look, but I am going for a fairly natural HDR look here, so I don't wanna overdo it, and I'm quite uh, happy with what I have so far. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and then we'll go in and further refine this image. Okay, so here we go. It has dropped it back into the effects pane where the HDR look tool or filter is. I'm actually gonna crop this first, and what I wanna do is a 16 by nine, and the reason why, apart from the fact that I like 16 by nine, is because um, I carried very uh, little equipment. This wasn't really a gym photo trip. This was mostly a uh, dad and daughter trip to New England. So I carried very little equipment with me, which means I shot this with a really wide angle lens, a 20 millimeter, and that meant I wasn't able to really get that close, except I did take some shots where I was standing on that rock uh, right there, trying to be careful, trying not to slide, and trying to get a little bit closer view. But in other words, I didn't have like a 24 to 70, which I normally would have with me. So I wanna crop it in and get a little bit tighter view, get rid of some of that extra foreground. And now I've got my stuff uh, in place and ready to go. So HDR look is a done because I've done that. I've also done my develop stuff, but I wanna add some more filters. And one that I wanna add is sunshine. I really like this filter a lot. I think it does a great job of kind of popping, you know, some of that warmer kind of look overall. I'm gonna increase the amount. I'm gonna increase the warmth as well. Going to mid 40s there and a little bit of saturation also. So something about like that, let me turn this sunshine filter off. There it is without sunshine. As you can see, it's a bit cooler overall and now with it, it's a bit warmer overall. And I really like the look of that. I think the water looks nice. It's one of the nice things about shooting waterfalls in HDR is they'll often blend together and you'll get a nice smooth bit of water assuming you have at least one fairly long exposure, which I do in this case but I think the water looks great. I think the rocks look nice, the trees, the sky. Actually, everything I feel like has come together pretty nicely so far. Now, one thing I do wanna do is get the Tone Enhancer tool or filter, and I'm gonna add that, and what I wanna do is create a mask. So I'm gonna invert that. I'm gonna get a gradient, and I'm gonna get linear top, as you can see here, which means, no, I'm not. I'm gonna get linear bottom, excuse me. I'm gonna drop that in about here. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit, and you know, something maybe, I'm gonna pull that down a little bit something maybe about like that. So as you can see in the uh, view version of this, uh, of the mask, you can see white, let's see, I gotta say this correctly, I say it wrong all the time, white reveals black conceals. So what I'm about to do will be revealed or shown in the area that's white. So let me turn that off and let me look at my notes. I'm adding, I can just close the masking menu. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast here and I'm gonna take the highlights down like a negative 20 or so. I'm gonna bump the shadows a tiny bit like a five. Now if I turn this off, if you look at this sky before, 
and this guy after. It's a slight reduction. It's really not that much, but I think I'm also gonna reduce the exposure slightly. It's gonna give me a little bit better control of the light in the sky. I don't wanna overdo how bright that may look. Let me turn this off. There you go beforehand, and then there you go now. Obviously, it's hitting some of the trees as well. I think it blends together nicely. I'm not really worried about the fact that it kind of overlaps the trees, but I think if you look at the original, certainly brighter in the tops of those trees in that far distant mountain on the left, and after, it's obviously darker there because I've darkened it, but I don't think that works. Uh, I don't think that doesn't work. In other words, I should say that clearer. It does work for me. So, uh, and also in the right-hand side, the tree line there, I think the before and after, I think that looks fine. It doesn't look unnatural. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now there's one other thing I wanna do, which is actually gonna involve Tone Enhancer one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and click and add that filter. And what I wanna do is an AI Quick Mask. Let me click Invert and get AI Quick Mask. And for drop, I'm gonna make this really large because I'm gonna drop a significant portion of the photo. And I'm gonna do something about like that for the top. And then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna get all up in there and along that. And then I'm gonna drop these, uh, that's a wrong word. I'm gonna reduce the size of my brush and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add some more red all up in here and in there. And if you can't tell yet, I'm basically keeping the water. So now I'm gonna go to keep. If I can click it correctly, there we go. And I'm gonna click keep all up in here. And what I wanna do is basically just brighten the water a little bit. And so let me hit apply, see what that's done for my mask. And that's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and get drop again. And I'm gonna come along here and just make sure I get more of that rock out. Maybe a little bit of that rock as well and hit apply one more time. I think that looks good, except I forgot this section here at the top. So let me do that and hit apply. And I think that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done. Now my mask is in place. So if you wanna view the mask, you can just click there. You can see I basically this stuff in white is where my edits are gonna apply and the black, it will not apply. And my edits, let me just close the masking menu. My edits are that I wanna lift the exposure a little bit. So, you know, like maybe a 20, 25, something like that. I wanna lift the highlights a little bit as well and also lift the whites slightly. So basically it's kind of brightened the waterfall area and some of the foreground because it was feeling a little bit too dark for me. So if I turn this off, that's what it looked like beforehand and that's what it looks like now. So a bit brighter overall. And that's really kind of what I wanted, not kind of, that is what I wanted to do to the photo. The only thing I might would do is stick a vignette on, but I haven't tried that. And I just like vignettes to be honest, to help sort of center the eye. I think I would do big softy. I think I'd increase the brightness maybe change the size a little bit so it's not so intense. Let me see how that looks on the photo overall. There it is before, and there it is after. It slightly darkens that bottom left corner, which I kind of like because it is fairly bright, and I don't want to draw your eye away, but if I turn that off, there's the before, the vignette, and then again with it. I think that looks nice, and that's my entire edit, my friends. I've been able to take basically three exposures, blend them together, and then build upon some of that base image to further refine it and really get, I think, a very natural looking HDR photo shot at sunset. And that's really, you know, a lot of HDR photographers will either blend exposures, uh, especially landscapers, they'll uh, blend exposures to either, you know, take one exposure for the bright and one exposure for the dark areas and blend them together, which you can do here as well. But in this case, I wanted to build a traditional HDR, just merge the three together and uh, come up with that. So hopefully it gives you some ideas, shows you kind of a demo of what the HDR tool here in on one can do for you if you're not familiar with it I did a tutorial there where I did a little bit more in-depth look at some of the different components of it but here I just wanted to do kind of a walkthrough and workflow hope it gives you some ideas thanks for watching my friends you guys take care of yourselves I'll see you really soon and adios